Hello. I haven't made a video about warning people about the vo a, a voice in the desert and Jesus Christians. Now, I wanted to go further, and I wanted to say about my experience. One of my first experiences is I saw a bunch of the videos by a voice in the desert. And I was disappointed because I couldn't comment on the videos. Well, there was one video where they, they said that water baptism wasn't actually taught by Jesus, which is wrong. Which is wrong. Actually, in the gospel, there's... There's water baptism. And actually, Jesus is great commission. Now, there's one in Matthew and there's one in Mark. Where Jesus said, go forward and baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. But when he says, baptize in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in Matthew, he's referring to water baptism. Now, how do I know that? Because that's how Nathaniel, that's, who, that's how Andrew, that's how John, and that's how the Apostle Paul, Peter took it. And that's how the later the Apostle Paul would take it. There's not a debate on this issue. Now, David McKay, he believes that Jesus meant, well, baptism with the Holy Spirit, not baptism with water. But that's wrong. Now, there is baptism in the Holy Spirit, and I'm not denying that, but specifically in the context of the Great Commission, Jesus is saying water baptism. It's pretty clear. And we know that from how the disciples reacted from it. David McKay, you think I'm going to... You think people should believe what you had to say? Or should someone believe what someone like Peter would say? Someone who actually followed Jesus around for three years. Do you think Peter might have a better understanding of what Jesus said than you would? Do you think he might understand what Jesus means by certain terminology better than you would? Do you think G Peter might know Jesus' mannerisms better than you do? I mean, that would be like your wife saying something, and you're like, oh, this is what she means. And I would say, no, she means this. Well, of course your interpretation would be right, because you've been with your wife for so many years. You've been around her. You know her. You know her mannerisms better. You know, like me and my wife. I know my wife. So if my wife would say something, I've been with her for, you know, ever so many years. So I would get it right. Well, in the same way, Peter would know what Jesus is saying. Andrew would know what Jesus is saying. Nathaniel would know what Jesus is saying. John would know what Jesus is saying. And they interpreted his message as water baptism. Okay, so I wanted to correct David McKay on this. I think it was a pretty black and white issue. I think you'll probably agree with me. It's a pretty black and white issue. We shouldn't even have this conversation. But it should give you a red flag to voice in the desert that they're so theologically bankrupt that they don't even understand why water baptism, water baptism is important. Anyway, I'm on their form. I go to their form. They don't allow comments, but David McKay, he says, well, if you want to say something, go to my form. So I go to the Jesus Christian form, which is what they call themselves, Jesus Christians. And I make an account, and I post, you know, how I, I, I believe that they are wrong about water baptism. I tell you what, I had different people coming at me. I had different people trying to say things to me and correct me. And so then I, you know, I, I start replying to the different people who were saying things to me. Well, guess what? David McKay... Every response has to go through him because he's the moderator, which is a little shady first, okay? But then he begins to not post certain things that I said, and then he begins to edit things that I say. Talk about being deceitful. To me, that's deception. I mean, having a post that's being attributed to me and then having words, but it's actually his editing of my words. So, I mean, I would have long paragraphs that he would edit into shorter, you know, not as long. And that really turned me off. And I started to complain to him, like, you know, you, how can you have an honest theological discussion with somebody if you're going to edit what they say? And then there's some replies that they make that you're not even going to let the forum see. Well, you know, he, you know, he, he didn't like that. And, and, and we split ways. But the reason I'm telling you this, the reason I'm warning you of this, is because they try to get people, they want their message to go to people smoothly. But people that are descending, people have, see, 
in my theology, I want my I want to be sharpened. And if I'm wrong, I want to be corrected. I welcome people. Like if you see this video, please comment. I want dialogue. David McKay, the way he handled the situation with me, he it showed me that I don't think he wants dialogue. He wants his message, which is a wrong doctrine to get through, but he's not open to correction. And the correction's right there in the scripture and using some common sense. So anyway, if someone's gonna edit someone's post and then not then not allow that person to defend themselves, not allow that person to reply to certain people, yeah, that's the type of person you're dealing with. Not someone that has open dialogue and, yeah, let's talk about this issue. Let's see if I'm right or wrong. That's not David McKay as far as, you know, his form, as far as my experience with him on the form, which is a red flag. You know, in his videos, he says some questionable things about pastors of local churches. But you know what? I could go to a local church pastor, have a dialogue. I could go to, I, I, I could write a letter to a deacon board of a local church on a theological issue and, and they would go over it. There's an openness. There's not an openness like that with David McKay and the Jesus Christians. And that's a warning. And that was the first big thing that turned me off on them. I knew their theology was questionable, but let's, you know, who is right all the way with theology, right? When they started to be deceptive and editing my post and then not allowing certain things that I said to be posted, that to me, you know, was a, a really deceptive move, mood. So I'm warning you against them. David McKay is not telling you the whole story. Okay, I don't believe he's telling you the whole story. Of course, I don't know. I'm not in every single conversation. I don't know he's, you know, I don't know what specifically he said to you in private emails, but just in his videos, yeah, they seem appealing. But there's an underneath layer that I believe is ugly. And I believe if you search the internet, there are people who have actually been Jesus Christians that will tell you certain things. There'll be people that have been in dialogue with David McKay. And they'll warn you about him. Listen. Bismarck said, fools learn from their own experiences. I prefer to learn from the experience of others. Learn from my bad experience with David McKay. Learn from the experiences of others with David McKay that was negative. That He's not a person to go live in a combine with and go follow. Okay? He is not. He is a narcissist. So I wanted to have my experience, and I'm not gonna have video after video after video on this, but I, I wanna see how it goes. I wanna see if people appreciate my standpoint or not, and you know, if, if I'm just whistling in the wind, I guess. So anyway, have a good day, and if there's anything in this video that is incorrect, please correct me. I do not intend to slander anybody, even David McKay. David, I want everything to be above board. I don't believe you want things to be above board, but I do. So if there's something in here that's not right, you tell me, okay? And if it's true it's not right, I'll take the video down. I wish you would take videos down that weren't right. Maybe you have, but you have other videos up there that aren't right right now. And you're just leaving them up. You're sulking in bad theology. Adios.